effective half guard has to have either frames or an underhook. If we do a good job of disrupting both, we're gonna pass. If we do a good job of disrupting one, we have to disrupt the other before we continue forward. If, I, if he has an underhook and I try to pass the half guard, it's gonna go poorly for me. So this second style of half guard passing, which we call the reverse sit pass, is gonna take advantage of the fact that he does have an underhook. It's, we're gonna address that underhook in a way other than just pummeling for a new underhook. So first of all, if I'm on top of any of the half guard, he has a nice shell. If he gets an underhook and I just move forward, he's gonna come out on my back. Very bad scenario for me. Even if he doesn't have, go back. Go back to the half guard. So if he gets that underhook, so let's say I'm even starting to pass, right? And I clear this frame, and now he gets an underhook. If I continue forward, see him slipping out? So if he starts to get that underhook, I have to move my body back and re -pummel. Well, I don't have to do that, but that, that's an option. We can't continue to go forward. So one answer to this is to go back and re -pummel. You don't have to win an underhook in order to pass, but you can't lose an underhook in order to pass. So if he gets the underhook, maybe I just come back, and now we can proceed with our no hands pass if we win the underhook. What if we can't get the underhook back though? So he gets a nice tight underhook, right? Now I'm in trouble. If I do not, if I continue forward, I'm just gonna give him my back. If I do nothing, Elias is gonna work sweeps, whether those be coming out to the back, whether that be the the, uh, the old school sweep, whether, you know, no, no, no matter what, it, I'm gonna be in trouble. So instead of what I'm gonna do is scoop here, scoop this way. So if he gets the underhook, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse sit. So this hip is gonna to touch this hip as I rotate facing back that way, and my armpit is gonna come right here to his shoulder. And so two things, that ha two, two things happen there, right? First, I flatten him back out, and second, I trap his underhook. Underhooks are really good for lifting, and so if Elias has the underhook here and he tries to lift me, Either he's coming to my back, I'm going to my my own, either he's, he's going to be on my back, I'm going to be on the bottom on the mat, or I'm going to have to withdraw and stand up. When I reverse sit, and we'll see this one more time, hands switch sides. Now if he lifts with the underhook, he doesn't really do anything. In fact, it's actually bad for him to lift with the underhook from this position, which we'll understand in a second. So this hand comes under, and go ahead and lock your half grip. Not everyone will lock their half guard here, but that is what gives you problems, and so I want us to treat it as if they will. So I'm gonna come under and underhook this leg. If you can't underhook the leg because it's so tight, you can just cup the, uh, cup the gi right here. The reason we're doing this is what I'm worried about is my base back here is not super strong. I do have my feet, but if you ask, or for example, to put this foot on the mat and bridge into me, he might be able to move me, right, and roll on top. That's, what, that's not what I want. So the reason that I have that underhook this leg is now if he tries to do that, I just take my leg out and pass. Ideally, we have the underhook because that gives us the ability um, to stop him from posting. But let's say his legs are really tight and you can't get it in there, right? It's okay to just have it here because now if he tries to step on the mat and base, we can just move our leg out anyway. Like if you, it, it, and it especially works, it's almost like a tripwire, right? So if, if he unlocks his guard and steps on the mat, my hand knows that's gonna happen and I just back step and pass. So uh, let's do that whole thing from the top one more time. I'm gonna put in a couple of more details. So if I'm passing his guard from here, and uh, let me move you over this way again. All right, so I come in like I'm gonna try to do my no hands pass, but this arm sneaks into the under. I can't proceed forward anymore, right? So now my armpit switches sides, goes right to his Bellingham BJJ logo, and my hip turns down. I'm trying to turn my outside hip down to his near side hip. And now I'm actually in a really good position, especially if I get the underhook, but even if I don't. So now if Elias tries to, you know, if, if he tries to bridge into me, I can block. If he really opens his legs, I can just take my leg out, right? And my toes back here have to be on the mat engaged so that I don't, um, so that I don't get knocked over. So if he just opens his legs, cool, we take our leg out and pass. If he's holding on to the half guard of last resort, the death grip, 
Watch my hips. All my hips are going to do is they're going to move back toward the camera and get my knee in against his near side hip. Now we can extract. The reason that is sometimes necessary is sometimes if you try to pull your leg out, he follows you with his hips, right? So if we get our knee against his hip, he can no longer follow you with his hip. This hand stays on this side. This hand comes to his uh, near side hip. We come right to the 100 kilos side control position for the pass. And that is our reverse sit pass uh, from half.